Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you about the MCAT and a little bit more of a laid back and relaxed video so we can just chit chat about everything that's going on and everything that's gonna happen in the near future. So I think I might have told you in my first video that I'm a pre-medical student and I'm actually a junior in my biochemistry major right now. So it's about time that I should be taking the MCAT. And so back in November, I actually registered to take it on April 21st. So about three months left to prep. And I wanted to do this video on how I'm prepping for the MCAT and different tips that you guys can take away for it. So the first step in prepping for the MCAT is to set a goal for yourself. So the MCAT isn't like any other test where if you get a 90%, you're in the top 10th percentile, you get an A, you're good. It's actually a scaled test. So I think the highest score you can get on the MCAT is a 528. And obviously like any score between 514 and 528 is going to be in the top 10th percentile. So like you can be confident that you're going to get in the 90th percentile, but the MCAT actually, I think it's called the AAMC, actually set a level at 500 for that marks the 50th percentile. So be aware that the MCAT's a four section test. Each section is scored slightly differently in terms of how many points you get for the section. Um, but even if you get a 500 out of 528, that may seem really good, but it's not. That's a 50th percentile and you likely won't get into medical school. So my goal is to aim between that 514, 528 range so that I am putting myself in a good place so that I can apply to a wide variety of medical schools and have a good chance of getting in. So the next step in preparing for the MCAT is actually making a timeline or a schedule. And it's recommended that you study about 360 hours before you take the MCAT. I thought that was a little bit excessive, especially because the classes we take in undergrad are classes that prepare you for the MCAT. So I'm doing about 240 hours. And what I did was I took my calendar, my calendar, um, and blocked out a couple hours per day, two max on school days, between three and four, depending on the month and how close it is to the MCAT for the weekends. And obviously it's gonna change a little bit depending on how much coursework I have, if I have any projects or tests coming up, but I just got my calendar out of the way and blocked out 240, about 240 or 250 hours um, of studying before the MCAT. So make sure you kind of have an idea in your head or even better on paper, I work better with paper, um, about how many hours you wanna study and really get into that routine. Um, the next step is to get together your actual materials that you're using to study. There's a bunch of different companies out there like Kaplan, Princeton Review, I think Exam Crackers is one, um, and figure out which one works best for you. I was choosing between Kaplan and Princeton Review and I ended up choosing the Princeton Review subject review books because while Kaplan's really good, they have more extensive subject reviews, so if you don't feel like you learn the material well in class, or you haven't been in college for a long time, and you need that subject review, I do Kaplan. Their practice tests are a little bit easier than the MCAT though, which is why I went with Princeton Review, because I feel like I know the subject matter really well, but I really wanna test myself, and I've heard that their practice tests are much harder than the actual MCAT. So think about what you want to use. Um, but if you're an AMSA member, which is the American Medical Student Association, be sure you go on their website and check and they give a 10% discount. I don't remember the coupon codes, but I will link them in my description box. So go check those out. Um, but they offer like 10% or 15% on Kaplan materials. So the next step is to actually prep for the test. While reviewing for subjects is good, it's not going to really truly prepare you for the questions they're gonna ask on the test as I've sadly found out. Um, the questions aren't gonna be like anything you've had before. They're, the MCAT actually tests your applied knowledge. So 
you've got to know all your basics of physics really well, biochem, biology, even general chemistry. Like that's what I'm studying right now. I'm almost done with this book. But the questions on the actual MCAT is taking that knowledge and applying it to situations. Like we think of like tests and physics, that's applied knowledge, but this is beyond, this is one step beyond that where they're putting you in a novel, like a completely new situation that you've never heard of and you're required to derive equations, for example, new, brand new equations based on how variables interact with each other. So my biggest tip is to study practice tests. Go online, I think the AAMC actually has free practice tests, but if you sign up for Kaplan or Princeton Review, they give you like three or four practice tests. So be sure periodically you're taking those because that will truly test your ability to take a seven and a half hour, hour long exam with really hard questions. So remember, practice tests. Once you take your practice tests, be sure when you're taking them or after you take them, take them like you're actually studying for the MCAT, but after you take them, um, make note of the subjects or content that you had a really hard time with and didn't do so well on the practice test and go back and review that material, especially right before your MCAT, your actual MCAT exam. Go back and review that material and make sure you're understanding it, practice problems. But also, as you're taking those practice tests or practice questions in the book, make sure you're writing down. I like to do my chapter, how many questions, and the percentage I got correct. So as you go through it, you're kind of having an idea of if you're doing any better on the problems, if you're grasping the material, and you can go back and check those records. So the last tip is right before you're about to take the exam, maybe not right before, I scratched that. So about uh, maybe two to three weeks before you take the exam, you need to start getting prepped for taking a seven and a half hour long exam. Make sure you're able to sit down for two hour blocks of time and get through like focused material, rough material, um, because each section on the test you're allotted 95 minutes, which is about an hour and a half. But prepare yourself to do two hours of studying so that you're over prepared because this is gonna be even more tedious being in the actual room. Another thing I wanna talk about is making sure you've got your diet under control. Know what foods are gonna cause you to crash because this is a marathon, not a sprint, and it's, it's in all seriousness, it's an endurance activity. Make sure you're not eating a lot of sweets. Make sure you're eating healthy food that's gonna keep you going for a long period of time. Don't overeat because that actually causes you to be sleepy but find that balance. Three weeks is a good time to find out what foods are affecting you in what ways. Also, I think this is more important than the food thing, but be sure you're getting enough sleep. Uh, I would say this is like a two week thing. Two weeks before the exam, make sure you're at least getting six hours of sleep each night. Like me, if you're taking it like me in April, it's gonna be hard because that's around finals time and I know everything gets stressful, but if you don't have enough sleep, you're not gonna be able to focus on these analytical problems and work through them. So make sure you kind of prepare yourself for these analytical problems and get enough sleep. And yeah, that's about all I have right now. But like I said earlier in the video, I want to make this a series. So next month I'll do a check-in and let you guys know anything I've learned, everything I'm going through. And maybe at the end, depending on what my scores are, I might do a score reveal and let you guys know how I reacted, kind of like a reaction video, but I'm a little bit hesitant to say for sure I'm gonna do that because we never know what our scores are gonna be and I don't want to post a complete train wreck. So stay tuned for that and let me know in the comments if you guys are taking the MCAT or what you guys want to hear from me next time. So it's good seeing you. Talk to you next week.